Okay, what's up everyone? I guess this is take number two, the first one. <sighs> you want to find a way to make me outrageously angry? It's half when my microphones not work. I got like three minutes into the video and apparently it wasn't recording or there wasn't the audio wasn't recording. <sighs> Unbelievably frustrating. It's interesting how you can go to like sheer rage to high extreme over something, which is very minor. It cost me two minutes of my life. And if anything, I got a practice round at doing my intro to this but still it's so unbelievably frustrating oh my gosh what an amygdala response so like in your brain you call it your animal brain and so you have your prefrontal cortex and your amygdala you can this is really simple your prefrontal cortex is higher processing decision making it doesn't become mature until you're like 22 or something like that maybe 20s and so they always say that's why teenagers act out because everything else is developed but your prefrontal cortex isn't totally um, and so you have this, your amygdala, which is like, we call it the FU brain because you get cut off in traffic. It's like FU, it's the one that's a knee jerk reaction. It's the one that makes you super mad when the audio doesn't record. You just get ah, outrageously angry. It seems like uh, social media taps into that. The more you can kind of get to that amygdala response. Who needs a deep thought process? Who needs deep conversation where you can just piss someone off and get really good engagement? Because it's quick, it's rapid, it's fast, right? Imagine I got pissed off so fast from that. Um, in the same way, you know, maybe the media works as well as how quickly can they engage you? It's not a thoughtful conversation that's engaging, it's something that pisses you off. So if I gave a cool title to this video about how squats suck or you don't need a deep squat or something like that, I'd probably get a lot more views than I'm going to get here. By the way, um, if you want to skip ahead, I did my athlete team training session workout today. I did something new and a little bit different the way I videoed it. So I break down the exercises with an audio on the video itself. And so as I talk about the exercises, you guys can watch them as they roll along on the full screen versus just being on the side. I did push press and band assisted jumps. I did power lunges and hurdle jumps. And I did depth jumps. And on the hurdle jumps, um, I ended up doing some on the grass and I did some on the cement because I think it's important to actually do some on a hard surface. I play on a basketball court. I built up a good capacity to jump on the hard surface. If I just go to a soft surface and only do soft surface training, I often um, don't apply the same intensity because the cert loading surfaces are different. So what I got into in my first video that I failed to record, was I was, which is cool by the way, it's a cool story, is that I ran to this gentleman. I was upstairs doing the hurdles. I look down the turf and I see an older gentleman sprinting. And I'm talking about sprinting. I'm not talking about like, oh, he's trying to run fast. This guy is moving. And I go down there and introduce myself to him. I said, first off, what you're doing is awesome. It's impressive. Like you might not think it's very cool. You might think it's odd that someone's coming down to talk to you about, hey, dude, you're sprinting really fast. But he turns out he's 65 years old. He competes in the senior games in the area. He runs like a 14 something hundred meter dash. And the juxtaposition of him running relative to his peers walking around the turf it was hilarious because he moved like he was, I don't know, 40 years younger. Absolute burners. His form was really good too. High stride frequency, really impressive. As you get older, you don't have the same propulsive ability or your force outputs go down, but you have that you know, same somewhat frequency. It seems like you watch older individuals run. They can still turn over pretty fast. They just don't cover as much distance per stride. So I asked him, I said, well, you know, are you a former college sprinter? What are you? And he's like, no, I, I just like to do this. I actually kind of goofed around. I don't want to make up his history, his past, but it sounds like he had some talent. Maybe didn't, you know, tap into it, we'll say. I don't know if he messed around or whatever, but he said, I just kind of goofed around. And um, now I do this and I like it because it's fun and enjoyable. And I said, well, what do you do to keep doing this? Do you like lift weights? He's like, no, I sprint. He's like, I'll do some weight training here and there. But sprinting is the main thing to keep me sprinting. And I was like, well, that seems horribly logical. Fun fact, he also looked really good. He was 65 years old, had great hair, um, great gray hair, good skin, and looked like he was moving really well. Maybe sprinting is the fountain of youth. Maybe I should just start sprinting as much as I humanly possibly can. But I mean, he looked great and what he was moving was awesome. I thought it was so inspirational because you got all these biohackers and people talk about longevity and you know i want to look young this dude embodied it and he's just out here sprinting and moving at a clip that was wildly impressive and so for myself to go down there and talk to him i'm sure he was like who is this guy i was like by the way you might think i'm nuts but i'm like an athletic connoisseur i really enjoy people 
who do ath- or I don't enjoy people. I enjoy athletic things and people who do those athletic things interest me. And you, my friend, are an anomaly. I've never seen someone like yourself out here moving like you do. And so I had to ask him, I said, I don't want to interrupt your workout. Like, he's like, oh, I'll just run some hundreds and fifties. And what he would do, he would sprint and he would go sit down for like five minutes. So he'd sprint like a hundred, 110 meters, maybe because of soccer field. And he'd just go and sit down <laughs> and rest. And by, he might be like seven minutes in all the total rest because he'd walk all the way back and then sit down. Then he'd do some like, I don't know, some light, maybe hip stretching, some side to side wiggles and sprint again. I thought it was so impressive. And so people out there who think about training and all these infinitesimal number of things you can do, it seems to come back over and over again that competing really hard, especially something like sprinting, seems to be some unique aspect to it. I'm sure jumping has some aspect to that as well, but it doesn't have the cyclic repetitive output. It's a single burst effort. The idea of sprinting where it's rhythmic, it's cyclic, it's this is a story. I don't I don't remember where I read this. And this is how embedded sprinting in the idea of locomotion is in our body. Back in French Revolution, they would study the people they put in the guillotine. So they would like decapitate people and study them. And apparently someone got decapitated and their body got up and sprinted for another, I don't know, 10 seconds. And so the idea was the head was removed. So the central motor program was gone. It wasn't in the brain anymore. It was just the spinal cord reflexes. And sprinting was embedded in the spinal cord. And the fact that it's a spinal reflex, the ability to sprint and synchronize your limbs from locomotive pattern. And so maybe that such a deep embedded aspect of our neurophysiology is so important to tap into while things like squatting and other stuff I'm sure has their benefits. There seems to be something so special about sprinting. Um, So I wanted to talk about that because it's really cool. He was a really nice guy to stop and chat with me. And again, probably was kind of like, who the heck are you? And so I was trying to tell him like, look, I'm not just some crazy guy coming down from the rafters. Uh, try to bother you, ask you about your sprinting. I legitimately think this is awesome. And so hopefully if I find him on here again, I ask him if I come back down and he's here, can I film him? So I want to film him sprinting. I have a film of him now and it's an okay footage of it. He said it's cool if I filmed him and shared it, but I want to get a good video of him going because honestly it was freaking awesome. Um, and so very cool stuff. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, and then guys, check out the video of the workout here. If you guys have comments or questions, let me know. It was a good workout. Really enjoyed it. The little summary is at the end, by the way. I was stupid and shot some hoops and then kind of jumped. And I didn't piss off my knee, but probably pushed myself a little bit too hard. I had a really bad job with volume management when I come back from being sick. So I just was off of sickness and I'm like trying to make up all these workouts. Just like everyone else who makes all the same mistakes as I do. We're all humans. Um, I'm sure you've been there before. And you're trying to cram all these workouts in for some reason in your head. You have to get them all done. And you end up pushing yourself too hard because you had, you know, you're not even ready to do physically 1,000% outputs. And now you're doing like double the loading. So stupid me. Learn from my mistakes. Not too bad. I'm sure I'll be totally fine. But just want to share with you all. So check out the workout. Hope you enjoy. Appreciate you guys and enjoy it. Okay, so we'll walk through these two exercises here. It's a pairing we have. This first one is behind the neck push jerk. To drive up, if we're driving up with our legs to generate movement. So, like a vertical jump with a barbell, where you jump up. Same concept, dropping into it and driving up. Use your legs in that movement. So, drop, quick load, quick reversal. And that same concept applied here, but now in an assisted fashion. So, we don't have load, we're actually lighter than we would be otherwise. Drive it into the ground, popping up quick. You fall into the ground and punch and quick. Rapid, rapid, rapid acceleration. So these two pair together. Again, leg movement, not upper body. Driving upward, fast, a slight leg lift, making it reactive, paired with an accelerated or an assisted version where I weigh less. I'm driving up, same vertical action, but against a lesser body weight than myself because this band's pulling me up. If I weigh 200 pounds, I pull it down. I might weigh 180 now. I'm producing force against a lighter version of myself. Okay, so this one is a dumbbell power lunge. 
basically getting about high rapid rate of eccentric loading into a lunge. So you're gonna step and fall into it and quick reverse. So you're letting the falling velocity of the step basically load you with some dumbbells or even a barbell. Quick up, really rapidly producing force when you hit the ground. Think about some stiffness from that initial position. An aggressive step, so I call it a power lunge. So you're gonna be powerful, and you'll pop off the ground. And you know it's too heavy, the movement breaks into two parts. You kind of hit and then have it go, versus being able to make it one smooth contact. Drop it, boom, quick. So I'm dropping into it, relaxing, and then done before. Really fast, just like that. So the dumbbell power lunge. Straight forward, we're gonna be straight ahead to our hurdle jump, paired with those dumbbell reactive ones. Just about three step, four step, not too fast. Good pace, and up. And focus on being effortless and smooth off the ground. So not too fast into the approach. You don't want to feel herky-jerky when you hit the ground, it'll be smooth, smooth contact. I do three of these here. I just do my left leg because my right leg's a little messed up from these. Good pace. And as you get comfortable, I'll actually increase the distance that I jump. Not necessarily the height of the hurdle, but the height and stay stationary. I want to increase the distance on this. Under about four rounds, so 12, and you go to 15 jumps paired with the dumbbell power lunges. Okay, so we're gonna do some really high depth jumps here. People ask me, why do I do these so often in my program? And part of the thing is, is you wanna build the capacity to handle intense things, but then you also want to sustain that capacity. So if you just build up to be able to do this, that's fine, but I wanna be able to do it often. So if I wanna do it often and make it not as intense to me, I gotta do it more often. So when I hit the ground, it's not a super long contact time, but it's not a super short one. I'm not one that's optimizing jump height. So ground, explode up, really emphasizing jumping high on these, not quick. Now you can mix it up though. You can do some where you're trying to be as quick as you possibly can. So jump, oh. really gotta extend up I like to look up when I jump, just like I'm jumping for the rim or something, trying to hit my head on the hoop. Oh, really fully extend my body. Sometimes I short change it if I don't have a hoop. I don't actually extend my hips all the way through. Jump up. Really thinking about as high as I can every time. I do about five to 10 of these based on how they feel. I think that's four. I have no idea. We got the count. That was a tad bit faster, right? So I'll mix it up. This one will be for super quick, or as quick as I can. That's five. Let's mix it up, let's do quick here. Quick on that one. Six, high off the ground. Seven. I'll probably just do eight. We'll, we'll see. Seven. Eight. I like that, we'll do eight. I'm gonna aim for about maybe 40 total reps. Five sets of eight. I don't know, maybe 25 to 40 reps. Depends how I feel. If this is the main thing, I'll probably do more reps. I'll do some other stuff before this, so obviously not the main thing. Don't be afraid to take a break in between, right? Last time I'm aiming for 10 reps. Sometimes I'm obsessive and now I wanna get 10 reps. I'll say left off at eight, so I'll just do two more. One. That short break allows me to continue with the high output. And last one. Two. Good. Two good reps. So, 10 reps in all. Again, you can manipulate how you hit the ground. Deep, slightly upright, longer ground contact, short ground contact. Both are beneficial. I think sometimes 
We obsess over the short ground contact ones, which is fine if you're a sprinter. A lot of jumping in basketball, especially off two feet, is a longer ground contact. So being obsessed with the short ground contact might not be working the same muscles in the same positions. They actually get in sport if you're a longer contact type sport. That's a good one. Felt good. Feel the jumps. Consciously feel them. I'll do a couple more. Oh, not bad. We'll take it. <laughs> 